continue on our message with mercy. I'm not going to preach very long today. If we could have those lights in the back, Sister Thelma, if you could just flick them. No, never mind. Arturo got it. Praise God. We're on our fourth message of grace. If you open up your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Before we do that, I want you to know what kind of things are happening in our Sunday school. We got kids learning the Bible. Some of these kids might know more Bible than you. So I challenge you to beat them. But we got this young lady. He, she wants to demonstrate what she's learned uh, in Sunday school. She, I went over to her house for fellowship the other day with Sister Amanda. And uh, she wanted to show me what she knew. And I was impressed. And I want to have her share that with you right now. Go ahead, little girl. Show us what you got. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes! Come on, girl! Yes! Go ahead! That's a girl being raised in God, huh? Yeah, go ahead. We got another one that wants to share with you. Who I love watching these children. No. I said, <laughs> I receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you. Acts 1 verse 8. Oh, go ahead, girl. Go ahead. You receive power <laughs> until which the Holy Ghost comes upon you. <laughs> come on. Some of y'all should feel bad right about now. Be like, oops. They know more than me. These kids are learning. They're not just going back there playing. These kids are getting steeped in the Word of God. Can I get an amen? amen? Isn't that fun? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. See, we're not just trying to grow, build a church from out here. We're trying to build a church from in there. Because that's the future of New Hope Pentecostal Church. Can I get an amen? amen? And they have fun. Believe me, this is, the Scripture and Bible can be fun. Yes. It's not a drag. It's fun. Praise God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Praise the Lord. Someone's going to have stammering lips in that hot tub today. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. And it says, but by the grace of God. Everybody say, grace of God. Grace of God. By, by the grace of God, I am what I am. I can stop right there. I'm going to keep going, but just think about that. Because of the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Oh, come on, somebody. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. But I labored more abundantly. This is repeating itself. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Let's pray. Jesus, let that word saturate. Let your understanding be given unto us through this word of God. Let us understand you better. Let us understand ourselves better in you from the word of God and this preaching. In Jesus' name, and the church said amen. amen. Give God one more shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. You know, I just want to start by saying, you know, when I say I love you to Jesus, this is not a small thing. I'm not just saying, you know, how you say, you say these things, you know, I love you. But, you know, we might be showing that love. Somebody tells, you know, I actually heard, uh, I was at my wife's family's house and there was this reality show called Cheaters. Is that what it's called? And these, I, I actually like that show because you know what? These people are getting Busted, sick. Busted. Like when I was in the world, you know, I, I did my dirt. And, and even when, I, when I've been in the church, I haven't been perfect. But I'm going to tell you something. I ain't never been like this. I mean, just shady. 
You hear, you hear him on the phone, oh yeah, I'm over here getting a coffee. Love ya. And she's watching on camera while he's sitting there with some girl. Oh yeah, I'm going to be home late tonight. I, don't, I gotta work. Oh, but, but I love you. Because she goes, well, I love you. Well, love you. And, and gets off the phone. And then they show up. And then the drama starts. <laughs> Those people deserve it. When they get that big, oh, cameras and everything. <laughs> you know, that's shady. But I'm here to tell you, when I say I love you to the Lord, it's not this, well, I love you. And move on with, you know, if I say I love you to God, then I go and, you know, pick up my sin and go get involved with things that are not of God, things that would displease God. That I love you doesn't mean much. But I'm here to tell you that when you say I love you to God, and then you go demonstrate your love through your obedience to God, that I love you means something. It means something. Listen, there are guys that beat their wives. And then they come the next, you know, black eyes and fat lips. And I love you. Here's some candy. Here's some bracelets and necklaces and jewelry. And here's a present to make up. That's not I love you. Because then they go do it right again. After they said, I'm sorry, beg for forgiveness. And then they, as soon as they get that weird thought, like they want me to beat them, I, I can feel it. And then they beat them. It's, 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 a very, it's a sickness. I want Some of these men, it's actually, they've said it's incurable, that they actually believe that they're taunting them. To, they want them to get a beating, so they give the beating that they feel like they're you know, asking for. It's a really, it's a big sickness. But right after that, they'll go and say, I'm sorry. And I love you. Don't mean much. Do you think that person feels loved? They're just waiting for the next time when the offense comes where they're going to get their beating. Or that person, you know, there's, there's lots of women who have been cheated on over and over and over again. And they know, they know that, that feeling. See, I don't know how I got here, but we're going to go ahead and keep going. Is that all right? When I, when I got into the church, I decided that I was going to be an advocate for women because I knew men were dogs. Because I was one of them. Roof, woof. The difference is I wasn't one of those mean ones. I was just selfish and just, you know, wanted whatever I wanted and didn't care whose feelings I hurt. I would try to, you know, minimize it. But when I got into the church, I was going to tell women the truth. Some of y'all men are going to be like, no, I'm telling. See, when women get this feeling, you know, this is Valentine's Day. We're going to, you know, we're coming up tomorrow. This is the Valentine's Day season. I'm going to teach you about real love for a minute. Then we'll get back to this. You know, when you get that feeling like something's wrong and just something's not right, something's not right. <laughs> it's not just a feeling. There's a reason why you feel that way. Let me tell you what the men do. Oh, don't, don't be ridiculous. What's wrong with you? You're, you're just so emotional. You women are blah, 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 blah. He's hiding. See, let me tell you something what I do. When my, phone, my wife picks up my phone. And, she, and she'll do this. She'll just start going through it. And I'll be, what are you doing? Nothing. Checking your messages. And I'll be like, go ahead. You want my code? I'll give you my, 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 my voicemail too. <laughs> Look all you want. You know, my wife doesn't feel insecure because see, if she goes into my wallet, here. Just don't, ain't no money in it. So <laughs> Look through it. Go through my pockets, whatever. You know, you stay away. I see you eyeing my wallet now. Back up. Back up. My wife can ask me any question. She can look through anything that I got. Because I ain't got, I got nothing to hide. But this is when the guy gets to, get my cell phone. Get my, get. Oh. And then you get that feeling. It come. Well, why? No, you're being ridiculous. No, he's hiding something. I'm trying to tell you, church. This is not love. Love is like, you know what, I can trust you, you can trust me, and I don't have to try to talk her out of anything because I'm not hiding anything. It's the same with God. Listen, you get that feeling, men try to talk the woman out of the feeling because they're hiding. But we can't do that with God. If we tell God I love you and we go do this other stuff, God will not be tricked by us. Women are getting better at this too. They, they're not getting as tricked as easy as they used to be. You know, a girl would be told, you know, oh, I was just working late. Okay. And they take it. But girls nowadays getting smart. They're getting hip. They're going to be the ones coming home late next time. Oh, I, my car broke down. Yeah, in front of whose house? <laughs> 
But listen, when it comes to love and it comes to God, I don't play around. When I sit here and say, I love you, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, I mean it. And I show it in my walk with him because when I have an opportunity to get in sin, I go, oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you. Just like a man who loves his wife and some woman comes up, hi. Uh, bling, bling. See you later. Ring, ring. Uh, if I ain't got one of those, I show my love. You know, my wife has a pair of shoes just like that. You know, when people come talk to me as a woman, I, I talk about my wife quick. Is she in here? I saw her. She left her. I saw her come in. That's an easy way that if, you, if you're not married, you don't have a ring or you're not married. And some, let's say you're a guy and some girl comes up and starts talking to you. You know what? My girlfriend is just like that. The easy way to show them right away. But you know what most men do? They don't mention girlfriends, wives, nothing. They just think you as a single because you never mention nobody. That's not showing love. I want my wife to know she ain't got. You know what's so funny too? This is just funny. We live in Gallup. <laughs> Do you really believe that you could be making out with a girl on this side of town and it not get to the other side of town by next morning? <laughs> you walk down the street, you go to Sammy C's, hold it hand. Oh, did you see? On the phone, guess who's here, girl? Guess who's here? Guess who's here? Yo, man, I see with somebody. <laughs> And then you see them come in and you see the fights. Man, I've seen a pregnant girl going. I was, before I was say I was in this, I just started coming to church actually. I was at Joey, 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 pal Joey's. I mean, everybody dated everybody at least once. So you can't go in there without messing with somebody's girl. <laughs> somebody's ex-girl, something. There's only 12 single people in Gallup anyway. You know what I mean? I mean, it just, but people really believe they're going to go out and do this dirt and not get caught. And they wonder, how did she find out? You're in Gallup. <laughs> Come on, people love to talk. Back, to, back when I messed up, you know, I failed, church. I failed. And but I'm telling you, it wasn't by the next day the whole town knew about it. Because I was John Michael, Mr. God, always talking about God. Some people were happy to see me fall. Yeah, he always talking about Jesus. Look at him now. But I'm going to tell you something. Some of that I brought on myself because I wasn't loving enough. I was too judgmental. I was too hard on people. So when I felt they were like, good. But that's not what I want. If, if someone is going to see something happen to me, I want them to have the relationship with me where they're hurt. Oh, that was a, he was a good guy. That's too bad. Not good. I hope he fries. But you know what? I learned from that that I've got to love people more. I've got to be gentler to people. I can't put myself on a pedestal and put you down there. You ain't living like me. But I'm telling you something. When I tell the Lord I love him, I mean it. Part of that is learning how to change my behavior. To learn to grow and to become mature by having more love. If you don't have enough love in your life, you ain't growing. You're not maturing yourself. You know how you can really judge? I'm telling you, the Lord's been talking to me in all different kind of avenues. You know how you really love, you can tell how someone is good with God, how, how good they are with God? Find out how good they are with their neighbor. How good they are to their brother. How good they are to people. Will give you a good idea what kind of relationship they have with God. Mm, mm, mm. So what I want to do is I want to love. Now I didn't just... Church isn't about all love because sometimes I got to tell the church, look, cut it out. Knock it off. You're not pleasing God, so stop it. And, I, and I, that's, the Bible says that's okay. But I can't be doing it and treating you like a dog. I, we're not beating, we're not raising, you know, uh, dogs and what do they call that? We're not, it's not a kennel. This is the house of God. And we need to treat people the right way. Listen, I've got a guy right now, and we need to pray for him. His name is Steve Yoder. And this is, this is where my growth is coming. I'm very excited about where I am based on my conversation with him compared to conversations I had with people who I had to apologize for later. I talked to this guy, and he's, he's going through a lot right now, and he's, he's really searching the scriptures, and him and I are going over Bible studies, and he'll give me a scripture about what he believes, kind of reluctantly, because he's afraid I'm going to beat him up. And I'll tell him, well, go to this scripture here. Why don't you go to Acts 2 or go to Acts 10 or, or why don't you go to 1 Peter here. But he gives me a belief system and, and I don't agree with it. 
And he knows I'm not going to agree with it. And he's waiting for this. He's waiting to get whacked. And I go, well, why don't we turn here? Like, what does this say? And we learn together.